So we're going to continue to talk about the ras raf mech erc pathway, which is very commonly dysregulated in human cancers and a target for drugs used to treat cancers. So we've covered up to this point uh, RAS, and now we're going to move on to the next uh, protein in the pathway, RAF. So you can see there's an arrow between RAS and RAF. So it turns out RAS will regulate RAF. So we'll have to talk about RAF and what it does, how it functions, how it's regulated, and how it's mutated in human cancer. So RAF, very important protein. So what is RAF? Well, uh, there's not just one RAF, there are multiple versions of RAF. And so we've covered in this previous, in previous video the idea of gene families. Um, so RAF is part of a gene family. So there's a gene family called RAF. There are multiple versions of RAF genes that our cells have. Some cells express RAF A, or I'm sorry, it's called A-RAF. Some cells express B-RAF. Some cells express RAF1. We're just going to talk about, in general, RAF. They more or less all work the same. Um, it can be a little more complex, but I don't want to give you too much of that complexity right now. But in general, we're going to just talk about RAF in general, and what we're going to talk about applies more or less to all the RAF family members. RAF is a kinase. Many proteins that are involved in promoting and regulating cell growth and differentiating, regulating the cell cycle. Many of these proteins are kinases, right? Because phosphorylation is a very important way to regulate protein activity, protein-protein interaction. Uh, there's a whole set of videos I have on phosphorylation and what it does to proteins. So uh, RAF is a kinase. What kind of kinase? It is a serine threonine kinase. So there are different types of kinases. Uh, a serine threonine kinase is a kinase that will add phosphate groups to either serine residues or threonine residues. Not every serine and threonine, just the ones that are in uh, its substrates in the substrate binding domain. So RAF, it's a kinase. So the questions that we have to answer are, well, what regulates RAF? Because most enzymes have their activity regulated. They're not on all the time, not all of them. Some are off, some are on. And what does RAF phosphorylate? And therefore, what does RAF regulate? So these are the two questions we're going to answer. So the first thing I'm going to tell you uh, about RAF is that it can exist sort of in different conformations, in different stages of the cell cycle. And when we're talking about human cancers, we talk a lot about um, how uh, there's sort of the pro-growth version and the regular version that when cells are in G1. So here we're going to talk about RAF, uh, it's a kinase, but in the G1 phase of the cell cycle where there's not pr any pro-growth signals, the RAF kinase, its enzyme activity is very low, it's, it's inactive. So it's not going to phosphorylate its substrate when cells are in G1. Uh, and its three-dimensional protein conformation uh, can be referred to as a closed conformation. When cells get a signal to go through the cell cycle, go from G1 to S phase, uh, something's going to happen to RAF. It's going to activate. Its enzyme activity is going to get active um, by changing its conformation, and it's going to be able to phosphorylate its substrate. So we're going to talk now about what regulates RAF. So I'm going to draw RAF here a little more complicated. I'm going to add a couple of things to RAF. So what I've added are two specific amino acids, a serine at position 338 and a tyrosine at position 341. And I've also added a domain to RAF. So it's the RBD. That is the domain. What does that stand for? That is the RAS GTP binding domain. So proteins have domains. Domains allow proteins to have certain functions. RAF, it's a kinase. It must have a kinase domain, and it does. It also has this other domain called a RAF GTP binding domain. So we covered in previous video this protein called RAS. RAS uh, can bind GDP, which is what it binds when cells are in G1. And so here is a cartoon of RAS bound to GDP. And when cells are in G1, we already mentioned that the RAF kinase is in this closed conformation and it is inactive. So it's a kinase, but it's not functional, not active. So, what activates the RAF kinase? Well, when cells get a signal to go through the cell cycle, for example, being exposed to growth factors um, that bind growth factor receptors, that's going to promote the exchange of guanine nucleotides. 
on RAS. So what will happen is a protein such as SOS will remove the GDP, place in GTP, that's one nucleotide exchange, and now RAS is bound to GTP. Well, now that RAS is bound to GTP, guess what binds it? It is RAF. RAF, using its, R, uh, using its RBD, RAS GTP binding domain, binds. And that binding, that protein-protein interaction between RAS GTP and RAF causes a change in RAF's three-dimensional conformation. When RAF's conformation changes, guess what? It is accepting of phosphorylation from a kinase, and those ser that serine and that tyrosine become phosphorylated. And when they're phosphorylated, that helps activate RAF. So you've got these two things that occur, RAF binding to RAF GTP, which changes their conformation, which allows it to get phosphorylated. Actually, it's three things, right? So RAF binding to RAF GTP, RAF changing to an open conformation, and RAF becoming phosphorylated on those sites, which activate its activity. And now RAF can detach from RAS GTP and go into the cytoplasm and phosphorylate its substrate. Uh, you'll notice there I wrote question mark kinase. Uh, it is not clear what kinases phosphorylate RAF on those uh, hydroxyls on the serine and on the tyrosine. And we're not going to talk about it now because it could be a little confusing. Um, but suffice it to say, some kinase cause, uh, could be multiple kinases, one on the tyrosine, another one on the serine, will phosphorylate RAF, and then RAF will become active. So again, you need a number of things to occur for RAF to activate. You need binding to RAF GTP, change in conformation, and phosphorylation on uh, at least these two residues. There are more residues that can regulate RAF, but we're not going to talk about them right now. So that's how RAF activity is regulated. Okay, great. Now that RAF is active, what is it going to do? Good question. Um, we have to talk about RAF's substrate. It's a kinase. It must have a substrate. It must phosphorylate something. All right. Let's introduce one more protein today. We're going to introduce a protein called MEC. So, and I'm going to draw here a serine at position 217 and a serine at position 221. So here's a new protein called MEC. What is MEC? MEC's a kinase. What kind of kinase is MEC? It is a dual specificity kinase. So there are different types of protein kinases. This is a dual specificity kinase. Most protein kinases are serine threonine kinases. They'll add um, phosphates to serines and threonines in their substrates. Some protein kinases are tyrosine kinases, like the EGF receptor, that's a tyrosine kinase. And then some uh, protein kinases actually can do all three recept all three hydroxyls, right? Serine, threonine, and tyrosine. So this is called a dual specificity kinase because it can do serine and threonines and tyrosines. So that's the dual specificity. So now we've introduced this new protein called MEC. What can I tell you about MEC? Well, I can tell you that MEC, when it is not phosphorylated, um, and typically that is in G1 phase of the cell cycle, it is not active. So again, Phosphorylation can regulate a protein's activity. And let's see how MEX activity is regulated by phosphorylation. So, uh, cells are in G1, MEC not phosphorylated, not active. Now, let's say RAF becomes phosphorylated because of that signal from RAS. So cells are getting a signal to grow, like so let's say they're getting exposed to a growth factor. So what happens is RAF B opens up, becomes phosphorylated, RAF is activated, and RAF goes and phosphorylates MEC. And now that MEC is phosphorylated, MEC becomes active. So these phosphorylation events on MEC by RAF activate MEC's kinase activity. And so what MEC will do is MEC will now go and phosphorylate its substrate, right? And so what you have here actually is the beginnings of a kinase cascade. RAF is a kinase, It'll activate and phosphorylate MEC, which is a kinase, which we're going to see phosphorylates another kinase. And again, the point of this is to get the cell to go from G1 into S phase. So RAF is commonly uh, phosphorylated and activated, pushing the cell to uh, phosphorylate and activate MEC. 
these signals are going to tell the cell it's time to go into S phase. Um, so that is how RAF is regulated by RAS and how RAF regulates MEK. In the next video, we're going to talk about how mutations in RAF can lead to cancer.